What is bipolar disorder? The word bipolar means two extremes. For the many millions experiencing bipolar disorder around the world, life is split between two different realities, elation and depression. Although there are many variations of bipolar disorder, let's consider a couple. Type 1 has extreme highs alongside the lows, while type 2 involves briefer, less extreme periods of inflation interspersed with long periods of depression. For someone seesawing between emotional states, it can feel impossible to find the balance necessary to lead a healthy life. Type 1's extreme highs are known as manic episodes, and they can make a person range from feeling irritable to invincible. But these euphoric episodes exceed ordinary feelings of joy, causing troubling symptoms like racing thoughts, sleeplessness, rapid speech, impulsive actions, and risky behaviors. Without treatment, these episodes become more frequent, intense, and take longer to subside.
Many people know that the kangaroo is a marsupial from the family Macropodidae. There are about 69 species of kangaroos in the world. They live in Australia, New Guinea, and the nearby islands. Also, everyone knows that kangaroo females have a special pouch where they carry their cubs. But not everyone knows that a kangaroo has a very short pregnancy term. A baby is born about a month after conception. However, this is not a grown animal ready for life in the outside world. The size of a newborn kangaroo is only a couple of centimeters, and it weighs about a gram. In this embryonic state, the cub makes its way into the pouch, and the tiny kangaroo does not yet have hind legs, so he has to use the front ones. Moreover, the mother does not help him. She only licks the path to the pouch, where the cub immediately starts sucking on a nipple. Well, he doesn't actually suck it, because he's not yet able to. He's too small. Milk is secreted into his mouth with the help of a special muscle. Another peculiar thing about the kangaroo is that it has four nipples in its pouch, and each of them secretes a different type of milk.
In 2019, a study led by Zurich's Crowther Lab analyzed satellite imagery of the world's existing tree cover. By combining it with climate and soil data and excluding areas necessary for human use, they determined Earth could support nearly 1 billion hectares of additional forest. That's roughly 1.2 trillion trees. This staggering number surprised the scientific community, prompting additional research. Scientists now cite a more conservative but still remarkable figure. By their revised estimates, these restored ecosystems could capture anywhere from 100 to 200 billion tons of carbon, accounting for over one-sixth of humanity's carbon emissions. More than half of the potential forest canopy for new restoration efforts can be found in just six countries, and the study can also provide insight into existing restoration projects like the Bond Challenge, which aims to restore 350 million hectares of forest by 2030.
The sensation of fullness is set in motion as food moves from your mouth down your esophagus. Once it hits your stomach, it gradually fills the space. That causes the surrounding muscular wall to stretch, expanding slowly like a balloon. A multitude of nerves wrapped intricately around the stomach wall sense the stretching. They communicate with the vagus nerve up to the brainstem and hypothalamus, the main parts of the brain that control food intake. But that's just one input your brain uses to sense fullness. After all, if you fill your stomach with water, you won't feel full for long. Your brain also takes into account chemical messengers in the form of hormones produced by endocrine cells throughout your digestive system. These respond to the presence of specific nutrients in your gut and bloodstream, which gradually increase as you digest your food. As the hormones seep out, they're swept up by the blood and eventually reach the hypothalamus in the brain. Over 20 gastrointestinal hormones are involved in moderating our appetites. One example is cholecystokinin, which is produced in response to food by cells in the upper small bowel.
How do schools of fish swim in harmony? And how do the tiny cells in your brain give rise to the complex thoughts, memories, and consciousness that are you? Oddly enough, those questions have the same general answer, emergence, or the spontaneous creation of sophisticated behaviors and functions from large groups of simple elements. Like many animals, fish stick together in groups, but that's not just because they enjoy each other's company. It's a matter of survival. Schools of fish exhibit complex swarming behaviors that help them evade hungry predators, while a lone fish is quickly singled out as easy prey. So which brilliant fish leader is the one in charge? Actually, no one is, and everyone is. So what does that mean? While the school of fish is elegantly twisting, turning, and dodging sharks in what looks like deliberate coordination, 